Good morning. I'm Marcia Sloan Ladd. I serve as Vice President for Advancement here at University of Finley. We're so very pleased that you've joined us today for our Fridays at Finley. And uh, also to let you know, this will be our final virtual only Fridays at Finley. Our plan for the fall is to come back, have it both in person and continue the virtual option as well. So we'll have more information to you about that soon. But uh, welcome, we're delighted you're here for our special As We Lean Into Summer Fridays at Finley. And also wanted to mention before we introduce today's guest that um, we have a lot of other things happening on our campus during the summer, including a lot of summer camps for kids. So if you'd like information about any of those, please go to the University of Finley website and uh, see if there's something that may be of interest uh, to the young person in your life. Everything from course camps to our massive young artist workshop that we have going on in July. And for the adults who are interested too, we have our massive summer conference coming up July 12th through the 14th. And that will be virtual uh, this year. And so no matter where you are, you can participate and uh, learn from the artists and illustrators who make those children's books come to life. I'd like to thank Premier Bank for being our sponsor of our Fridays at Finley series. We couldn't do it without them. So thank you so very much for your support. So today, uh, prior to hearing from our speaker in panel, we do have a recent alumna who's going to give us a few reflections. Her name is Julia Harris. Julia graduated in 2020. And uh, during her time here, she double majored in environmental health, safety, and sustainability, <coughs> as well as English equestrian studies. She was the first student to earn a minor in sustainability concepts and practices. And uh, you'll hear from her about some of the wonderful things that uh, she did while she was here in the effort to make our campus and her a better place. Following Julia's remarks, I will introduce our featured speaker for today. Julia? Good morning, everyone. Uh, Dr. Lada said, I'm Julia Harris. I graduated from Finley last year and now work for Waste Management and Sustainability Services as an associate project manager based at the Ford Lima Engine Plant and will soon be moving to another customer location as a full time project manager. Ever since I was a child, I've been inherently back, I've been infatuated with nature and very environmentally conscious, often nagging my family about it, um, probably to their children. But um, I, I, during my time here, between my classes and my own research, I've become even more educated on sustainability and, um, I'm sorry. Uh, humanity's impacts on the earth that we have, and this has created a very strong compulsion for me to change the path that society is on, with waste reduction being a priority. During my time here, I started Green Campus Club, through which I was able to create an indoor recycling program and educate students on waste reduction and other sustainability topics. And I Bible study, and due to our love of animals, we have an inherent gratitude for nature, and this often came up in our discussions. The most incredible experience I had at Finley was with Dr. Ben Dolan's Natural History and Conservation class. Our group went to Ecuador for three weeks, and we got to experience the incredible biodiversity that exists in the highlands, the Amazon, and on the coast. We visited a family-run sustainable farm and we learned a lot through lectures as well as research with the university there called ESFOL. Everything was absolutely amazing. And during my time here, I was involved with many sustainability efforts <coughs> on campus and did a lot on my own as well to further that. I had a lot of support from the HSS department and from faculty and students on campus who shared my passion to make a difference. And 
through my support from my professors and my mentor mentors here at Finley, I've created a very strong stance on sustainability and now will always speak up often about it and help to make change in the world. And I thank you all for your time and now I will put it back to Dr. Lada and she will introduce this morning's speakers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julia. We appreciate your time and uh, hearing of your involvement here as a student. So our featured speaker today is Mary Mertz, who is the director of the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. She was appointed to this position in 2019 by Governor Mike DeWine, and she oversees 11 divisions that manage Ohio state parks, preserves, forests, and natural resources. She also has been instrumental in advancing the governor's initiatives in H2O Ohio water quality programs. Mary started her career as an attorney and served as first assistant attorney general in the Ohio Attorney General's office, as well as numerous other government positions. Director Mertz earned her undergraduate degree at American University, her master's degree at George Washington University, and her Juris Doctorate at The Ohio State University Moritz College of Law. So, please join me today in welcoming Director Mary Mertz. And following the director's comments, we then will have a panel. And included on the panel, we have uh, two other speakers. Pat Babies, who's a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner here at Lancher Valley Hospital in Finley. And she also works part time at Sojourn at Seneca in Tiffin. And uh, her background is primarily focused on senior behavioral health inpatient psychiatric issues. Pat earned her nursing degree from Penn State University and has over 20 years of experience in the mental health field. Uh, we also have Dr. Robin Walters Powell with us, and uh, Robin serves as chair of the Social Work and Healthcare Services Program. And in addition to being a full time faculty member since 2007, she also works as a psychotherapist at Mind Body Health Associates here in Finley. Uh, she holds a bachelor's degree in social work from Ball State University, a master's in social work from The Ohio State University, postgraduate degree in social work research from Wayne State University, and her doctorate in education from the University of Finland. So at this time, Mary Ruth will talk with us about The Ohio State Park. Oh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks so much for having me here today. I was really excited when Dr. Lada invited me to join you today and to um, give me the opportunity to share with all of you some of the ways that being outdoors can benefit both physical and mental health. And I want to talk about how the Department of Natural Resources is making Ohio's outdoor spaces more enticing and more accessible for everyone so they can take advantage of those physical and mental health benefits. So over the last year, um, we started encouraging people to find your space. That was our, our campaign because we knew that during the COVID pandemic, we wanted people to feel comfortable getting outside. We wanted them to feel good. We wanted them to feel they could spread out, find their space across Ohio, feel healthy and safe. And, you know, we, we sort of had two meanings in this. We wanted them to find a physical space, but we also wanted them to find the, the mental space to try different things and expand their experience in the healthy outdoors. And so we ramped up our communications uh, and social media and all of our efforts to share more things that you can do outside. And I, I think we have something for everyone. So if you're into mountain biking, we have that. Camping, we have it in spades. Fishing, we're at a 30-year high for walleye fishing on Lake Erie. There's so many places in, North, um, in Northwest Ohio that are outstanding for birding. Actually, across the whole state, but Northwest Ohio is a special place for birding. And, and we wanted to encourage people to get outside, try new things, and feel better, again, both mentally and physically. 
And so when indoor options were limited in 2020, people did find refuge in these spaces, like Judy and Mike here on the slide did at Davy Wood State Nature Preserve, which is near Urbana. I think a lot of people had similar experiences to Judy and Mike. And so as the director of ODNR, I love the outdoors. I grew up outdoors. Um, my staff will tell you I get a little bit antsy if I'm stuck in the office too much. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I have lots of excuses for field trips and visits. Um, so it's not new for me. I grew up sailing with my father. I spent a lot of time on the water in Ohio's inland lakes, experiencing some of the best state parks and what they have to offer inland. Um, and I'm sure many of you have had similar experiences. I connect to those positive experiences I had outdoors with my family and with friends. And so I, I think many of you hopefully have the same type of happy memories. And the good news is, so we have our own experiences that tell us you can enjoy and unwind outdoors. And the good news is that that's backed up with the research. So, it, you know, it's no surprise that there's a lot of research that supports the health benefits um, accrue to getting outdoors. So often we first think of the power of green space. Some will call it forest bathing, forest therapy. Um, there are campaigns, we are very involved in urban forestry, the power of green. How does it help you breathe better, feel better, unwind? Um, but others focus on blue space. What do rivers, streams, lakes, how can they also make you feel better? Just being in those four, you know, some amount each day can contribute to your mental and physical health. So getting outside, you get a healthy dose of vitamin D, although a lot of us call it vitamin N for nature. So, so we encourage it. And, you know, the other panelists here today, they are the medical experts. I'm not. So they can give you more on the research, what they've observed in their own, um, in their own experiences with their own patients. And I, I look forward to them sharing that. But at ODNR, we accept this great research, and we look at our job as providing the infrastructure and the support to make people feel comfortable getting outside, to know how to do that and have a great experience. And so Ohio's lucky to have so many beautiful places across the state to explore. Our climate, our geography, allow Ohioans to get outdoors 365 days a year in every corner of the state and to experience all four seasons. So we own and manage more than 800,000 acres, so that's a, that's a bit of property. Uh, we have 75 state parks, the 21 forests, the, the state nature preserves and wildlife areas. With all of this real estate, there is public land near you, I assure you. And it's your land. We want to encourage Ohioans of all ages, backgrounds, and uh, abilities to get out and explore these lands. And over the past year, millions of Ohioans did just that. So in Ohio, our parks are free, so we don't have a counter system. We don't know how many people walked into each park. I'm okay with that. It's worth it to make them free. But we do know how many overnights, uh, how many people make camping reservations and cabins and lodges. And we have car counters at some um, parking lots. And we have observation. People who've worked in the parks for years and years, what do they see? What do they see in terms of cars and people? And it's truly amazing. Um, one beach I know, um, visit, visitation was up 300%. Our, our campgrounds were closed for a couple of months this year. During the period that they were open though, um, reservations sort of doubled up. And as it turns out, we had over 100,000 additional overnights last year for the time period that we were open. So people are discovering what I and hopefully you've known for a long time. There's nowhere better to be than Ohio's great outdoors. And we expect that trend to continue in 2021. Camping reservations during Memorial Day weekend just a few weeks ago were already up 23% over last year. So we're working hard to continue adding the desired features to our parks and campgrounds, repurposed overnight accommodations and cabins and lodges, pools, new restroom facilities. It's funny how important restroom facilities are to the Ohio public. I probably get more comments about restrooms than anything else. I know they're important to me and we respect that. Um, more electrical hookups at campsites. At the core of the Department of Natural Resources is about conservation. So conservation first, 
but to help people appreciate, enjoy, and get all the health benefits, we know we need to maintain appropriate infrastructure so they can get out there and enjoy it. And so with the amount of noise and stress every day, it's not surprising that people um, find a better state of mind away from the demands and distractions of our hyper <coughs> world. So in recognition of that, the Ohio Department of Mental Health joined with us. Um, they actually approached us based on the research they were looking at. And um, you know, they wanted to help people recharge, refresh, and hashtag right outside. So that was the campaign we've been working with them on. So May was Mental Health Month, and we kicked off the Thrive Outside initiative, um, which includes social media, um, English and Spanish language, uh, radio and TV ads, um, promoting a new trail south that I'm going to talk about in a second. So together with the Department of Mental Health, we've been promoting all of the mental health benefits of getting outside. We've also been focused on getting children outside. We want to start early. We want to get them outside and have a good time and call it sticks and they want to go there the rest of their lives. So um, it's important we have these spaces for children to explore in our parks. And so in the last couple of years, we've been opening 10 new uh, storybook trails on our properties. We have one more opening here in Northwest Ohio in just a few weeks. So these are half mile trails. Um, we think that's about the right length for young children. And they have 15, 16, 17 child height um, signs, panels featuring the pages of a children's book. And um, many of these, uh, these, these displays include activities children can do working off of the book. And one of the true joys of this project has been how much fun children and their families have. I, I love going to visit them because they're just full of happiness. And so we have a quick video about our storybook trails that I wanted to share with you. Today, we had a little bit on the ghost story of the trail. We had a little bit of green wine, we had a little bit of green area, and we had a little bit of trail, a little bit of money, and some hay, so no surprise. So this is a project in conjunction with the Governor's Ohio Imagination Library Program, and all of the books that we have selected for the trails thus far have been from that Imagination Library. So kids are getting the books in the mail, and then they're familiar with them when they come out and rotate the stories around the state. So um, we think that's a good way to get a great start to a healthy lifestyle. Um, so. So the Big Physician Hippocrate is called Walking Man's Best Medicine, and in recent years, medical professionals have started revisiting this important aspect of our health. So many people are familiar with the Walk with the Doc program, and, and we are a believer and want to help support that. We've also recently been in discussions with the Ohio Hospital Association and Medical Association about how to promote a Parks Rx program and encourage more doctors to actually write a prescription for people to get outside and take a walk of a particular appropriate length. Um, but how do you know where to walk? How do you know how to do it? How, how can we help support that effort? So, so we set out to provide as many tools as we can to help people feel safe and comfortable when they get outside and to know what to do. Um, so first, we revamped our website to make it more user-friendly and help people find parks that are nearby or have features they're looking for. And secondly, we launched an app, the Digiwear app. So um, this is an app designed to include every trail type and user, and you can search it by mobile or web. Um, most people use it on the phone, though, 
and you can find thousands of miles of, of Ohio's trails by region, by difficulty, by activity type. <coughs> There's all types of trails, right? There are bridal trails, there are biking trails, there are hiking trails, water trails. Um, and the trails on this app are not just the trails in Ohio State Parks, and they're not just trails in Ohio State property. We include most of the major metro park systems and county park systems across the state, and every day we're adding. Right now we have over 7,000 miles of trails that are on, that you can access through this app. And it tells you where to go to get on the trail and what to expect. Um, another thing we did was develop a state passport. A uh, state park passport to keep the outdoor experience fresh and interesting. It includes information about all 75 parks, encourages you to get, to get out to all of them, and even get you a prize. You get a stamp if you go to the right place to have your passport stamped, or we include special little stickers and decals in the back so people can use those as well. So I just have two more things I want to talk to you about. So before I finish up, um, earlier this year, the Ohio State Parks Foundation launched. And this is a really important development for outdoor recreation in Ohio. This is a nonprofit group focused on protecting and enhancing our state parks for everyone. They've selected their first project, and it's focused on accessibility and inclusion. So I mentioned several ways that getting outdoors is good for everyone, but there are barriers, um, and often people have barriers before they can have those great experiences. So one of the first projects for the foundation revolves around accessibility. So they are poised to support parks efforts to make trails more accessible by investing in all terrain wheelchairs that will be available um, to be rent at certain state parks. The creation of sensory trails for children and adults who may be overwhelmed uh, by the world around them and, and have other challenges and allows them to be more in control of their experience and have special aids along the trail. And finally, they're going to seek to make our water trails or paddling more accessible. So paddling is hugely popular. It's taken off. Um, we keep track of the uh, canoe and kayak registrations, and I can tell you it is tripling um, all the time. More and more people have these. So it's a great pastime, so I'm thrilled the foundation will be investing in accessible kayaks and launch ramps to help people um, get out on the water. So if you'd like to learn more or get involved, you can visit ohiostateparksfoundation.org. Um, we, I, I wholeheartedly welcome and encourage citizen involvement with state parks at all levels, whether it's at a local friends group or with the statewide foundation. So um, if you already participate, thank you. And if you'd like to get involved, I, I hope you will, and I look forward to working with the foundation in years to come. A very final thing, on Arbor Day this year, Governor DeWine um, joined us at Green Seal State Park near Chillicothe to dedicate a COVID-19 pandemic memorial program. And as a department, we are honored to take on responsibility on behalf of the people of Ohio, and I hope visitors will find comfort and solitude in this place for years to come. We plan to make <coughs> trees and develop a beautiful walk that we hope will provide a place of solace, uh, a very contemplative place to enjoy the beautiful views, and, and we hope this will be an important contributor to mental health as people reflect back on uh, a really, really tough time. So I have a short video about that as well. We are here at the Great Seal State Park, prepared uh, for the COVID-19 pandemic in Great Road for our day, where the governor will be here to uh, dedicate the streets of this road to those who lost in the COVID-19 pandemic. Governor Warren has trusted in us. He got to put it together to do more of that. We are going to use these to grow here. There's a section way of great grief on that when you all said that so much Jesus are native to the same old description. Red Nuts, Young Woods, the other of these women, we have small red, we have shit from the We also have some sugar maple, red maple here. I'm going to think about a small one. We're saying that this is what I We're saying that this is what I don't really know. 
a symbol that we all stick together and we get to win. You know, every day we have some challenges and we stick together and have good leadership and get through the goal we win. And then uh, also, we have a lot of trees for us too. Like I said, you know, this is a generation because this is going to be so much uh, for this, for this one, for this people and the guy. I mean, this is a and you are there for the time base, and it means so much. And, and I have never pretty much ever seen a lot of men that I was so with him in the past. So this is the great, awesome, awesome thing to have. They have a great race here. Uh, they have a great folks. Uh, you know, full of help. Um, they have a you know, and, and so we're in the game, and in they have a wonderful life, but it's unfortunate that the end of the society, so, you know, that's what we want to talk about here. Do what you need to do, get the vaccines, uh, take care of each other, it's so serious. And so those are just a few of the things that we are doing at the Department of Natural Resources to encourage people to get outdoors and enjoy all the wonderful benefits of nature and Ohio's beautiful outdoor spaces. So we believe in making those places as accessible and enjoyable and available as possible. I'm excited at the progress we've been making and look forward to another great year. So thanks so much for letting me share. I appreciate it. So we now will turn to our panel. Thank you so much, Mary. That was very interesting and great to see what all's happening around the state and uh, what's our appetite to get out even more. So um, I'm curious, and Pat, there you are down there too, but uh, Pat and Robin, um, from a physiological and mental standpoint, why do you think nature makes us feel better? Well, it just, it improves concentration and improves our memory. It just helps us reconnect, unplug. Um, it just gives us that sense of meaning and purpose. It just really helps us to stay connected. And uh, it just really helps us to have more, less, less depression and just more elevated mood. Yes, being outside of nature helps us to kind of shut out all of the modern day distractions. Um, it allows us to um, really focus in on um, the sounds around us, uh, the things that we see and hear. Um, we can tune into the cycles of nature and all of these things research has shown us that uh, really have a good uh, benefit overall for our mental health and our physical health. Can you think of a time when you have actually seen a patient who has been positively impacted mm -hmm. by time spent in nature? Sure. I think um, we're kind of in an, a, a time where um, people are um, looking for ways to um, medicate without medication. And um, so mindful walking is one of the um, techniques that we utilize in therapy um, instead of medication, <laughs> we want people to um, be present. It is one of the most effective ways to deal with anxiety um, is to um, bring yourself into the present. So using mindfulness and mindful walking 20 minutes a day um, uh, tends to really benefit the clients that I work with. Now, Mary, you mentioned that um, you've partnered 
with mental health professionals uh, recently. And I'm wondering also from a physical health standpoint, are you seeing uh, more interest on the part of physicians in state parks? And if, if they are interested, how do they get more information and more involvement? Right. So, so actually, um, pre-COVID, <laughs> we had just started um, conversations with so the Ohio Hospital Association and Medical Association because there are programs out there um, currently, and, and they have different names. Parks RX was one we were looking at where a doctor writes a prescription. You know, this is you need to take two walks a week for 30 minutes at a, you know, easy level or, you know, whatever, that kind of thing. And um, what we what we had in mind was we really wanted to promote that, step it up. And then the important part is the person needs to know where to go. So um, there are our databases and we were prepared to provide our information. COVID interrupted and the health professionals we were working with understandably turned to some other things, but we are, are back at it and have re-engaged. And our hope is to work with some health systems to encourage their member doctors to do more of this type of thing. Um, so, so we are, I'm not going to say at the beginning edges. I mean, I, I think it already exists across Ohio to some extent, but we'd really like to ramp it up and show that we're willing to do our part of the bargain, which is make all types of trails easily accessible and available for people to get to, understand, and feel safe on. So this Parks RX um, I assume that includes your city parks and county park systems and such, correct? Yes, okay. and that's exactly why the app we put together. I mean, the first inclination was, oh, we're doing a state app. It should have state trails. I, I, I don't think the people of Ohio care whether it's in a Ohio State Park or Toledo Metro Park right. or Hancock County Park. So we've invited everyone to participate. Great. Um, out of the 7,000 trails we have on there, I think... Less than 2,000 are on state property. Uh, the rest are all local. Yes. So, um, so with respect to what goes on in the brain, can you describe, you know, in layman's terms here, <laughs> um, what physiologically, what's going on in the brain that makes us feel better? Sure, sure. When we're outside. So, so vitamin D is, you know, of course we all know we need vitamin D, right? We get outside. Well, the reason for that is vitamin D actually helps our calcium be absorbed, helps oxygen, um, is more beneficial the way that the oxygen is, and uh, it just really helps with our blood flow. So literally, vitamin D relaxes our blood vessels, gets us out there. That oxygen, we need... We need outdoors to help that oxygen level. And uh, if you think about it, when we're in tight spaces and crowded workspaces, we have to compete for oxygen. And so our heart has to pump just a little bit harder outside, uh, inside. And our pancreas maybe has to work just a little bit harder to regulate our blood sugars. So when we're outside, we don't have to compete for that space because oxygen is, is more plentiful. And so our heart doesn't have to pump as hard reduces hypertension, reduces diabetes, reduces the risk of obesity. So that is all so important. Um, also, you know, the bacteria that, that this out, you know, our bodies are made up of microorganisms, or billions and billions. Like it or not, we have bacteria in our bodies. Most of it's good, and we can cohabitate with it pretty well. There's been studies that show that infants through school age children have to get out and have to get used to those microorganisms, good or bad, because our bodies soon learn to differentiate between what's good and what's bad. So that's really important. They have, there is a bacteria called Myobacterium vacae that is actually, has um, antidepressant components in it and increases our serotonin level, which is our feel good um, levels. It actually has anti-inflammatory processes in it. So all of that combined is just so important to our to our mental health, and it decreases that cortisol, the hustle and bustle, the stress that we have throughout throughout life is um, just builds up. And if we go from home to work to you know we're not sleeping, that cortisol just keeps building up, the adrenaline, the, the norepinephrine. And if we don't unplug, if we don't take time to reduce that, it um, it gets toxic. And again, leads to obesity, hypertension, um, diabetes, and uh, mental health issues. 
So this question is very timely with what you just described because uh, we had a teacher who's watching uh, who asked if I would ask you all for children so many have devices and spend a great deal of time on devices and how to encourage more time in nature that also isn't viewed as punishment <laughs> for, you know, getting away from the device for a while. So uh, for the parents, grandparents, teachers watching, what, what would you advise on that front? The first way to advise it would be quite the obvious, right? <laughs> devices. Um, fortunately, there are so many apps um, that they can utilize. Um, there's, a, there's a great app called Skylight. Um, it's free. Um, you can, it shows the constellations. You can shine it up at the, at the night sky, and it will show you exactly what the constellation is that you're looking at. Um, I think for teachers and even parents, um, you know, you could create challenges. You could create a group. Yeah, online, an online group of challenges where um, you could have the kids participating in that. There's a really good uh, resource that a colleague shared with me called, it's a book called um, How to Raise a Wild Child uh, by Brent Sampson, and it really uh, delves into the benefits um, of, of getting children out early into nature and kind of integrating them into their, um, into their life, and so it becomes a lifelong passion for them. So, how to raise a wild child, <laughs> and the app was Skylight. That's just one. Mm -hmm. um, I know Google has, uh, I believe it's called Google Eyes or Google Lens, um, where you can actually take a picture, and Google will help. Google, right? Will help us identify what those plants, flowers, birds, insects, um, and so you could make that just really be part of a, a fun curriculum, um, just adding to that. Outdoor. Oh, great. And there are, let, let me add, there are some um, some apps and some opportunities that are, are made better by this technology, right? So technology is not all bad. I mean, I have two daughters and they would see it as punishment if I said, <laughs> leave your phones home and come along. So, but um, a couple I want to point to, so iBird is a very important one. And this is where birders communicate with one another mm. as far as where you can see special species. So it's a very exciting way to use technology to encourage nature. And I, it also brought to mind... Um, um, Dr. Lada, you mentioned uh, the H2 Ohio program, mm -hmm. which is um, something the state is putting a lot, a lot of resources behind to ensure clean water across Ohio. The Department of Natural Resources part in that is to create, restore, enhance wetlands. And we're particularly focused in Northwest Ohio right now. So I've been out here earlier this week cutting the ribbon on some wetlands that we have created. And um, what we're installing in many of these places is a stand. And it has a, um, a stand piece that you put your phone in and you take a picture of the wetland, and the idea is this will be citizen-driven um, data and experience about it. Mm -hmm. So you take your picture, and then there's a website that you send your picture to, so this way we can get all of what we're hoping is lots and lots of people use it, and then you're gonna see the growth of the wetland from, from the grassy field to the construction where they dug the dirt out to the growth of the wetland vegetation to the inundation of whatever waters, if it's along the Maumee River, you know, it's intended to take the overflow. And we're hoping people go out there and take all these pictures and submit them. And then you'll be able to look at a time lapse. How has this wetland developed over several years? And so that's a very exciting way. We want citizens to use this technology to help us do better and help us understand more too. And that's something a child could absolutely get involved and have fun watching it over time then right. too. Great. Uh, so if any of you could give us a broad stroke prescription, broad stroke, of how much time and type of nature you would prescribe that we get per week, <laughs> what would that look like? Well, um, I mentioned mindful walking. Uh, the recommendation there is about 20 minutes, and that's really just being present. It's, it's not having the earbuds in. It's, it's really just listening to nature and really taking in, I see grass, I see sun, I see a bird. Um, really just bringing yourself to the present, um, which is a proven anxiety reducer. 
Um, I think spending any, any time, really 45 minutes to an hour a day, we talked about the, the Park RX, um, is, is a good idea. Earthing, right, which is a fancy name for going barefoot. <laughs> There's actual uh, benefits to that as well. Um, it's, it's connecting yourself to the earth, um, being present. Um, and so I think any of those additions would be helpful for, for mental health purposes. What about from a physical health standpoint? Same? Different? Same. Yep. Same. Just like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. All the physical aspects of that. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. Um, so the concept of blue wellness and blue space, that seems to really be catching on as well. Talk with us a little bit about how blue helps us. Right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in and then you all please add on the, on the science side of it. So um, we've seen an explosion in boating, mostly in paddle sports. And I think people are out there trying it because of the pandemic, something new, something different. And I think they're finding they like it because it's continuing on. So, so people are in, enjoying being on the water. I mean, I get it. I've been a sailor since I was a little kid. And there's nothing like um, getting out there and, and just the sound of the wind and using your own your own skill to get to where you want to go. Um, you, you know, I think Ohio's waterways um, can be dangerous to your health. And so um, actually our biggest safety campaign this year, or every spring really is, reminders to people to wear their personal flotation devices. 80% of water accidents can be prevented mm -hmm. if people wore their personal flotation devices. So, so water safety is really important, but once you learn those lessons, um, you know, I, not being a, do a doctor, I, I um, just the observation that it's just taken off in incredible numbers in recent years, and obviously because people enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, there's been lots of studies on green spaces, and they had um, two groups of students, and they had cognitive um, testing done. One group um, was listening to nature sounds during their cognitive uh, task. The other one was listening to busy cafes or traffic, um, loud noises. Um, and the, the, one, the students that had the nature sounds, they'd cognitively better on their task, more focused, more more um, alert than the other group did. Another study with students is they were given a task, halfway into the task, they were asked to look up and out, and there were the students that were looking at a big picture window of outdoor space, green space, versus students that were looked up at just a solid dark wall. The students that was looking outside were able to complete that task more focused and more um, energized than the um, other one. So, well, that may tie as well. I, on days like today where it's a beautiful, nice summer day, it's pretty easy to get motivated to be outside, right? But we live in Ohio, and January and February come every single year. <laughs> so, how do we who we who prefer the nice weather months? How do we get motivated? And also, are there ways of um, incorporating nature that maybe it's not quite so harsh uh, for us and we still get benefit during those nasty months? Any tips on that? Well, one of the things that we do and many metro park and local park systems do are winter hike series, right? It's a little more fun to go out in the miserable cold when there's a bunch of other people doing it. <laughs> so you get, you get to join with them to do it, and often you are rewarded with some warm soup at the end of it. So um, that's sort of a tradition throughout Ohio. I think there are a lot of park systems that do that. I hope people look for those opportunities. So I think enjoying them with other people and having a reward at the end of it, and knowing um, even if it is a, a picture-perfect crystal day that you're not miserable but just cold, you're going to enjoy that warm fire 
that much more mm -hmm. if you've spent the day outside. Um, rain can be tricky, and it's a matter of reminding ourselves that, that probably none of us are so sweet that we're going to melt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's um, I'm in the outdoor business, and, and we do everything outdoors. And and while you try to plan for any weather that might be dangerous, sometimes you just you just kind of march forward, and you get to the end of it, and you're glad you did. That's a, that's a hard story to tell, though. I think we're really lucky to live in Ohio because we get to experience all the seasons. And, you know, there's there's a lot of people that, that don't get that opportunity, and there's a beauty in all of, all of what we have, really. Yeah. And from a personal point, I can get out way more when I have children or my grandchildren. If you don't have any, you can ask to borrow some. But it's, it's a lot more fun and enjoyable to see a child enjoying nature than, than others. Yeah. So um, probably also snowshoeing and a number of other winter activities, correct, that you offer? Oh, and right. Um, so there's snowmobiling. And actually, um, there's there's more dog sledding in Ohio than, than you would think. <laughs> I was up at a state park, and I looked at all the musher trails, and I thought, how often are those used? And I'll be darned if two sleds went by while I was standing there. <laughs> so, so you'd be surprised how creative people can be. Um, you know, there is a lot of opportunity, cross-country skiing. I mean, you know, there, there are a lot of outdoor activities. Many of our parks feature really spectacular sled hills. Um, here in the northern part of the state at Punderson, we have a sled hill that even has a lift that takes you back up to the top, uh, which is a lot mm -hmm. of fun. Um, and, and these exist all across Ohio. So it's just really looking for those opportunities and being open to it and being a little colder, a little bit wet. It's not going to kill you. Great. Robin, with uh, increasing awareness of the intersection mm -hmm. of nature and health, mm -hmm. are you seeing any uptick in uh, number of students interested in doing research mm -hmm. or majoring in perhaps your different area, but having this as a research strand? Yes, a lot of my students are interested in this. Um, it's actually part of the, the NASW Code of Ethics is our connection with nature and taking care of nature and kind of the, the reciprocal relationship that we have um, and our responsibilities. And so um, I've even incorporated um, mindfulness into um, some of my, my coursework. Uh, they, have, they have 20 minutes of mindfulness. Um, and learning how to do that, I think it can be intimidating. Um, meditation uh, sometimes is a barrier for people because they feel like they're not doing it right. Like, but really, it's just closing, closing everything off and just listening to yourself. Um, and so I think that there is definitely a, a new interest in that. And I, I mentioned earlier, I think that people are just really interested in ways to um, to be present and not use medication. Um, as much to treat their anxiety and depression. And they're looking for more ways that are empowering to them um, to take control of their, their physical health and their mental health. So, yeah, I think um, I've had uh, multiple uh, students that have done tied in and research um, mindfulness and um, success in their, in their uh, professional career. Well, thank you, and thank you all, panelists. This has really been interesting. I really think we could continue this for the next hour, but we know people need to get to work. So uh, I want to thank our audience for viewing this today and let you know that we will be back in September. We uh, are busy working on our fall lineup, very excited, and uh, we know we will be kicking off in conjunction with uh, Mazza will be opening their new Conda STEAM, Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Mathematics. Um, the new Conda STEAM Education Center, and we will be doing a program on the integration and interdisciplinary nature of STEAM, what it means, and uh, how it impacts all of us. So we'll be looking forward to that, and we have another health professions um, segment coming up and all kinds of exciting things. I want to thank Premier Bank again for being our sponsor of this important series and uh, encourage everyone to enjoy the great outdoors and take full advantage of your parks wherever you are. So thank you again, panelists, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing everyone this fall. And again, we'll be offering it in person 
here at Weinbrenner on the campus of University of Finley, as well as for our new viewers who have joined us this year virtually, we will have that option for you as well. Thank you.